Good morning to you. Happy Friday. Today I want to clear up a question that's coming from a viewer. Way back long time ago on day two of my 365 day journey to improving your relationship with your dog, I did a video called Step Right, Pull Right. Meaning that when your dog's traveling on the same axis as you, your, both of your heads are pointing in the same direction, if the dog starts to go out ahead of you, then you pull to the right. By doing that, you're counteracting the dog's power base. These are horizontally built creatures. So if the dog is headed this way here, as I have, and I'm walking with the dog, and this is looking down from the top of my head, okay? If the dog is going here, then if I pull back, which is what most people want to do, they have a tendency to want to pull back. Pull back. Yeah, you're pulling me, so I pull back. The issue is that you're going with the dog's power. They're horizontal. They have their 60% of their power bases from their chest forward. Yeah, they're really strong, designed that way. Because imagine if you had to chase something down, you didn't have any arms, and you had to grab this big old thing with your mouth and pull it to the ground. Very powerful. Also designed for endurance, to be able to go 100 kilometers a day up and down these mountains over rough terrain and yet not expend as much energy as what you would expend trying to do the same thing. So in my video on day two, step right, pull right, go back and review it, I said pull this way. Don't go on a north-south axis, go on an east-west axis. By doing that, the dog doesn't have muscles designed to counteract that. They don't have all these great obliques and stuff like that from you working out. They don't have that. You pull them off balance. Me pulling north and south, it'd be like you trying to pull me over right now. Good, good job. Good, good, good luck trying to do that because now I can just plant my feet right here and you won't be able to pull me over. But man, if this even goes off about 10 to 15 degrees, I'm going to go over like a feather. Okay, so here's the issue. She's been trying this, but her dog has been pulling to her left, sniffing the ground. And when she pulls to the right, she feels like it's counterproductive. That's not actually working. Same thing with trying to get her dog to quit sniffing. So this is really like a two-part question. Let me go over the main one first, because again, I, unless you're in competition, you're competing somewhere and it's required that your dog look up at you the entire time, then sniffing is not a huge issue to me unless you lose track of where I am and you end up in a pulling situation. So let me go over the first one first. So just kind of draw up here like on, on my board here. Okay, so let me get erase some of the stuff here. Then I'm gonna move this out of the way and demonstrate. All right, I dropped the cap somewhere. Lucky me with all these leaves out here, fell right here by my feet. <laughs> it's gonna be a good day, cow dog. Okay, so here's the problem. If I'm walking this way towards you on the camera and my dog goes that way, to my left, to my left. So in other words, I'm walking, this is me, okay? And my dog over here suddenly goes, and I'm gonna go and draw a dog tail and do my best to draw a dog body here. There we go, probably looks more like an armadillo. But either way, you get my, get my point here. If the dog turns in such a way to go left, to sniff something, that its body is suddenly at an axis perpendicular to mine. Basically, if my left hip is facing the dog's rear end, we, if I pull this way, if I now pull straight across, step right and pull right, I'm essentially doing the north-south axis all over again. Yeah, we're just facing different directions, that's all. So if my dog's over here, got his head down on the ground, sniffing or pulling in that direction, even if I continue going this way, if I step right, pull right, I'm going with the dog's power. I'm going with its power. That's why step right, pull right only works if you and the dog are on the exact same axis. You are parallel to one another. You know, maybe offset a few degrees, but again, it all works. So does that make sense to you? Okay, so now all that being said, what do you do now? So let me move this little board out of the way. Be easier to move it than move my darn tripod. Okay, cow dog. 
Let me at least shove my dog here real quick. There we go, buddy. Come on, man. Okay, so now, if Captain were to go that way, so I'm trying to get him to turn this way, see if I can get him focused on something. There we go. Okay, he's focused on the ball. So if he were to try and sniff that ball, the second here I'll give him the old free word, and he goes after the ball, here's two things I want you to do. One, if it catches you by surprise, plant those feet right then, right then. There goes the dog. Absorb the impact on your body, on your arms, from your dog lunging or moving in that direction. Plant your feet. Okay, let's see what happens if I tell Captain now. Free. Get your ball. Okay, so he's right there. I plant my feet. Now, because, he, because he's OCD and he always brings the darn thing back to me, let's do that again. Let me move over here to a better angle here. All right, come over here, buddy. Sit. Good job. Okay. So what's going to happen is this. If he goes after that ball, I'm going to plant my feet. If he were to remain there, so I'm just going to pretend. Stay. I'm going to pretend like he's facing you right now, and I'm over here. He, he's looking at the camera over there. Okay, he's sniffing the ground. What I need to do is plant my feet right then. And then, most times, soon the dog hits the end of that leash, just like a dog tied to a tree, They'll immediately halt for a second, look back at you, maybe even adjust their position. If they don't, you adjust yours. You step up here next to them real quickly, and you don't have to get all the way up here. You don't have to be 90 degrees off their side. Uh, any, any of the step right, pull right is very effective from about, think of the dog's chest as zero, zero. All the way to their back of their tail is 180 degrees. Anything from about 45 degrees all the way to about 110 degrees is extremely effective. So, free. So now if I'm going to have him free, get your ball. Get your ball. Oh, now I can step right. Okay, so let's just, let me kind of get him in the stay here again. Sit. So you can dem demonstrate a little bit better. I'll put the ball facing the camera right there. There we go. All right, gal dog, come on over here. Buddy. Good. Okay, so now, again, if he lunges towards the ball, first step, plant my feet. Step two, re react. S absorb the impact, see what he's going to do. What's he do next? I just planted my feet. If the animal looks back and then just keeps trying to get to wherever it's going, whatever has his attention, then step up next to the dog and then pull to the right. Pull to the right. All you have to do is find your way into that 45 to 110 degree angle, and it will be effective, I promise you. Okay, so it's kind of difficult to do it, Captain. I can't really get him to pull me. He'll go get the ball real quick, and then he'll just bring it right back to me. So not a really good dog to demonstrate. Only dog I have here right now. So just use your imagination. Captain does go over here. He's sniffing. I, I absorb the impact right there. Then I wait to see what happens. This is all going to happen. This is all going to go down in about one to two seconds. Zorb, what's he doing? Stay in there. Still pulling. Okay, fine. Then I step up. Then boom. Then pull to the right. Step right. Pull right. Again, that's all you have to do is get into that arc, that 45 to 110 degree arc. That's all you need to do. Now, when it comes to Sniffing. Let me just talk real quickly about sniffing. Young dogs, they're going to sniff. Dogs that are low to the ground, they're going to sniff. Do you just whip out a phone every now and then, read the news, read a text, read an email? Do you try to learn a little bit about your surroundings, your neighbors? That's what your dog does when it's sniffing. It's learning vital information that it considers vital. Maybe you don't. But it lets me know who's been here. What's their gender? Did they have something to eat? If I smell their poop, I can actually smell what, they, what it was that they ate. This is called latent learning. Animals process this all the time. They don't have to have an immediate reward every time they do something. They pick up this information, they store it away in case I need it later. They're checking the pee mail. It's important that you allow your dog to sniff when you go for a walk, maybe not all the time, and certainly not if the sniffing is going to end up out. Okay, now he's bugging me. 
but we put the ball up. The, if the dog sniffs to such a degree that it loses track of you, then it really wasn't in a heel. And you may need to drop the dog back into a heel. And if it does it regardless, then you need to go work on heel in an area in which it's not so inviting to sniff. A lot of times that's just your own backyard. Dog knows your backyard. I know this backyard. There's no, been no other animal back here in my backyard. Not a lot of latent learning going on back here. I know where the door is that leads into the house that feeds me. That's about, and I know my favorite little tree back here that I go pee on all the time. But other than that, there's really no news in, new information. But going out there and sniffing allows your animal to gain predictive information. Predictive information, which then leads them to having a sense of control. I can control. I can find my way back home. I know who lives over here. Now, now I know who goes by here all the time. I know if that's a possible threat. I know what they've been eating. So that means that there must be this, some sort of food source nearby. You know, I could talk about this all day long. In short, I really don't care if I'm walking captain, and neither should you, if he smells the ground while I'm walking him. As long as, I, I, I kind of joke around all the time. Dog has two eyes, he has two ears, and he has two nostrils. So that means you get a set for you, and I need a set on me. Always aware of me. So go ahead and smell all you want to as long as you've got a set of organs that you can use. I mean, not organs, but a, a sensory capability that you can keep track of where I am. As long as you got an eye on me out the corner of your eye, you got stereoscopic vision, you can see 20% further than I can with your peripheral vision. As long as you can hear my footsteps, as long as you can smell how close I am to you, then go ahead and check the P-mail. Go ahead. I really don't care. This is very healthy for you. It's an outlet for frustration, which is very important. I really don't care. In a dog show, years ago when I used to compete, when I was hired to compete with clients' dogs, I did care. I did. I did not need them being distracted by anything. It also just didn't look sharp. It didn't look polished if they weren't looking up at me. But we did things back in those days to train that. We dangled balls from, our, from the neck. Yeah, it was right here, right on a little lanyard. There you go, so now I got Captain. He wants to look up here at the ball. Look at it. he wants to look up at the ball, at the ball. Yeah, the thing was held on a little alligator clip. So at any given moment, he's looking good, boom, ball's gone. And the dog gets to go after it. So the whole time the dog's walking, looking up at this ball, looking at this ball, thinking, when's that thing gonna come? When's it gonna come? When's it gonna come? When's Brian gonna drop that? Another thing that people will do is they'll stick the ball in their armpit. So now it's right here in my armpit. And then you gotta show it to him, right in the armpit there. Heel. And then at some point, just let go. And bingo, it's right there and he gets to have the ball. We did that so that you have your dog's eyes on you the whole time. For whatever reason, that's what the judges were looking for. And if you're gonna to bother to compete, a piece of advice is give them what they want. But outside that ring, I could give a hoot if my dog wants to smell while we're going for a walk, just as long as you don't make my walk miserable. You gotta remain in a certain little area, can't pull me, can't switch sides, can't suddenly decide to stop. Yeah, you gotta stay busy, guys. Busy with your dogs, but you also don't have to worry about them sniffing. Okay, so now that I went over that, what do you do if you do care about the dog sniffing? Same thing, step right, pull right, same thing. So now I'm gonna put this ball over here. Here. So we come back to Captain. If he goes, put his nose down on that ball, step right, pull right, right then and there. Step right, pull right. That's all you do. Don't try pulling up. Pulling up, first of all, is extremely ineffective to stop a dog from sniffing. It's very effective. Again, think of me like right now. I want to sniff. I really want to sniff, and you pull up. Well, opposition reflex is going to kick in big time, and also my head's really going to dive to the ground. It'd be like you trying to pull me off the camera right now. Pull me off. Try and pull me off. The more you pull, the harder I hang on. I hang on like no tomorrow. No tomorrow. Okay, same thing. You, you pull up, head goes down. He may look up for a second, then back down, it goes again. But when you step right, pull right, the 
pulled completely off of their axis, pulled away from the scent momentarily. Now you got them. Now you got them. And lastly, if you pull up, trying to stop your dog from sniffing, if you do it gradually, what is the old haptic, this haptic signal from the leash for the set? Breathe. Is it not? Pull up. Yeah. So now you have this dog walking along the sidewalk. Looks like it's rubbing his butt on the sidewalk the whole time because it's trying to sit because it's getting that haptic signal from you that I'm supposed to sit. And I'm trying to avoid that correction at, at all costs. I'm, I'm trying to avoid it, but you just keep giving it to me. So now what will that create? Over a period of time, forget about the haptic signal that you used previously to make your dog sit because now they've habituated to that constant input from you. That constant input. Free. No, you. Go get your ball. Get your ball, cow dog. Yeah, I'm. They're going to habituate to that constant pulling up. And when that happens, then you'll have to pull harder and harder and harder to get your dog to sit. So as you see here, things just start to compound all the time. Compound all the time. All you have to do, let me grab my board. Hold it up here so you guys can see it. There we go. Hopefully that's good enough. Oh, as you see here, I'm, I'm the whole darn show, man. I'm the director, the producer, the <laughs> script writer. I am it, baby. I'm the whole thing. Okay, so here we go. Again, you and your dog. All you have to do at any given moment is this is the dog right there. This is looking down at the top of your head. This is zero degrees. This is 180 degrees. All you ever have to do is find your way inside this arc right here, about 45 degrees to about 110 degrees. That's all you need right here, right here, right here, right here. No matter how you get that thing done, it doesn't matter, no matter how you get it done. Step up next to the dog, plant your feet, plant your feet, then step up next to the dog. Same thing, if the nose keeps going down constantly, it's just driving you crazy, step right, pull right, baby. Yeah, so that means that your straight walks from point A to point B, it's two miles that way, and we're getting there. Well, maybe you won't. Maybe you won't today. Maybe you won't this afternoon. Maybe you won't tomorrow morning. Maybe you need to dance with your dog. You go left, I'm going right. You put your nose down, still stepping right and pulling right. You start pulling me that way, I'm going to plant my feet. I'm going to step up into that zone that Brian told me about. Then I'm going to step right, pull right. But I'm not going to pull up when your head goes down to the ground. That is bad, 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 and more bad. Don't do that. Step right, pull right, but be in the zone. Do it. Dang, anybody want an OCD dog? <laughs> he will bring that ball and park it right between my feet. He doesn't care if there's a video going on. He doesn't care anything. He's a, he is a crazy nut. But like I, I tell you guys all the time, you see it every day. He just puts a big old smile on my face. I love it. Remember the old 70% rule? Apply it to your walking sometimes. Make sure you save 30% for fun. A lot of fun. All right, well, I hope that helps, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'll be out here again tomorrow. Maybe not out here. I'll find some place where I have a good signal up here in the mountains. Going to be up here for a few more days, and i got to head back to Memphis, and I'll connect you guys there. But tomorrow morning, I'll be seeing you, and we'll be going over something new at that point there. If you have any questions or anything that you want me to cover, send it to me. Sometimes I can be a little bit hard to reach up here in the mountains. Kira is back in Memphis right now. Just reach out to her. She will get the information to me, and I'll be glad to cover it, just like this one here. This is one of those where someone reached out to Kira. Kira reached out to me and said, Brian, can you do a video on this so you can answer our client's question? All right, guys, that's it. I'm out of here. Enjoy the rest of your day. Make it a great training day as always. Step right, pull right, but 45 degrees to 110 degrees, you'll get her done. All right, buddy. Last throw. Let's go. <laughs>